Hello, this is Catherine Massell. I am an elevated consciousness coach and 5D visionary. I help to give you the tools to engineer your inner technology to the frequency of 5D consciousness and beyond, so you can connect to the truth of who you are as an elevated soul who is here to thrive. And this is your monthly energy forecast for January 2020. So we are completing a cycle of manifesting and we are transitioning to the next phase or level of that experience. The incubation period that you've been feeling that you've been in for maybe far too long is over and it's feeling like maybe you're a, a small fish in a bigger pond and this might cause some fear. This might make you feel a bit afraid. This might make you feel that you have to get a whole new set of tools now, um, a whole new arsenal so that you can be equipped to deal with these changes. It's really important that with these big changes coming to not fear the end of something, to not fear that you're not equipped to deal with this beginning of something, but rather to have the energy of anticipation with a sense of wonder, a sense of genuine excitement for the start of this new cycle. This is the next level of what you're manifesting that you are stepping into in this next month. Don't be afraid to use what's already in your toolbox. You have amassed quite a store of tools and tricks and life hacks. Don't be afraid to employ them. Employ them to enhance your expansion and ease up on the quest a little bit to keep searching for the next newest thing, especially if that feels forced to you. Like everyone else is doing it, I should be doing this too. Have some faith and some trust that all of these tools and tricks and life hacks that you've amassed, you already have the resources that you need to move into this next transition of your manifesting period. You don't have to get the next newest thing. And if that feels forced to you or it feels like more of a sense of urgency to like take this program or learn this new tool, if it feels forced and it doesn't feel fun, that's a sign that you need to pull back and stop and start looking at the stores of resources that you already possess. Start going through old journals, reading through things that you've talked about, maybe epiphanies, revelations that you've written down and journaled about. Go through those old notes, especially going back to the last three or four months because there's a lot of nuggets of wisdom, a lot of resources there for you to pull from for this next level of the incarnation of you. If you have a natural desire for more knowledge, that's a sign to go ahead and learn this new thing, but it really needs to come from this desire of, I want to learn something for the sake of it, not because I know this will take me to this thing that I'm striving for that I can see. And you're, when you're doing that, you're siphoning off the pleasure of the process of learning or the pleasure of gaining new knowledge. You're siphoning off that pleasure from being in the pure present moment and taking that to the future, which doesn't exist yet. The future is unwritten. Yes, we can tap into things in our future and see potentials, but it doesn't mean they necessarily will come to pass. So if you're putting all your eggs in one basket of your future you looking exactly like this, some incarnation looking exactly like this, you're really shooting yourself in your spiritual and energetic foot. Your quest for knowledge, if it feels manic, this is a good time to just be with what is and let the gifts and abilities that you already possess naturally play out. Open up more fully to them and trust that whatever gaps you may experience in this unfolding of you moving into this le next level, this next transition into you, what you're manifesting next, trust that what is unfolding, any gaps that are there, they'll reveal themselves to you and you'll know at that moment, because you're going to be in the present moment, you're being invited to be very present with what's happening, with what you're transitioning into. Trust that exactly what you need to bring things into more alignment, you know, whether it's the right event, 
the right opportunity, the right tool, the right resource, the right person you need to connect with. Trust that if you are in the moment, it'll be fully revealed to you and you'll know what inspired action there is for you to take. Part of your suffering and your struggle to bring your manifestations into realization after, let's just say, or, you know, after this past year of 2019, any suffering or struggle that you're still feeling, it comes from a need to have all the answers and to have everything in place now. We're so entrenched in this kind of conditioning to have everything in place, everything in place, everything set up, everything ready to go. Well, you know, what's unfolding for us is these potentials that are being awakened for us now are so grand, so beyond what we can grasp with the current scope of our imagination. You can't really prepare for it the way you have prepared for things in the past. It's just not gonna work. It doesn't translate, it's not the same. Your level of transition at this point with these higher frequency energies is much bigger, much grander, much bolder than it has ever been. Trust in the unfolding and be with the magic of what it is as it happens, instead of siphoning off all of your energy into the future, when you know your desire eventually manifests, or that thing you want actually shows up and looks exactly the way you thought it would be, it'll show up, but most likely not exactly the way you thought it would be. Trust that that is still okay and maybe even better. As we go into January, we start transitioning into these first few weeks of January. Understand that a big part of you is still reviewing 2019. What drama themes are you done with playing out for good? As you're going through this kind of 2019 review in the first few weeks of January, what are those drama themes that you're done with? You're just gonna say a hard no to it anymore. Where are you still in shock from these dramas and traumas that played out in 2019, maybe from very early in 2019, but you're still kind of in shock and awe from this. You're feeling a little shell-shocked from it and you're not gleaning any clarity from it anymore. Maybe it's time to collapse this, to completely dissolve it, mark it, download it and complete and ask that the lesson be revealed to you in the utmost clarity. There's a lot of clarity coming for us in the early part of 2020. Funnel your energy into that. Ask your guides, go into meditation. Get this crystal clarity that you are looking for so you can get rid of that feeling of being shell-shocked from whatever happened in 2019 or maybe even 2018. There is a special focus this month on bringing your mental and physical health into balance and alignment. Anywhere you've been neglecting that, it's time to ask for help if you need it, okay? Sometimes we get a little stubborn in our ways and we think, you know, when I really have the time to set aside for this, I'll do it and I can do it on my own and I, I can devote all my time and energy to that and I'll do it. I don't need any help. Well, sometimes we have to ask ourselves why. Why do we have to feel like we have to do it alone? Does it make you feel like that suffering or struggle to bring that physical, mental health into balance it's only really worth it if you struggle to get there, if you do it on your own, if you pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and do it. That kind of thinking really has to go the way of the dodo because we are all about collaboration. We are about community as we move into more unity consciousness. There is no shame in asking for help. And that's another part of our conditioning that we're ready to lose the paradigm of this thought, this belief system that we are weak if we ask for help. We are lesser than if we ask for help, if we ask for assistance. Some people in the world happen to be really, really good at helping you get your physical and mental health into balance. Why not seek out that person, maybe through a friend of a friend, through a recommendation, that person who can help you? And maybe you don't have to make a big financial you know, commitment if it's not in the cards for you to do that, but you can enroll in you know, maybe a very low investment class to just get yourself some good tools, a good mindset so that you can do the work on your own going forward. But maybe you just need a little boost. Maybe you need a helping hand 
to help you lift up to this next level of your potential for balanced and aligned physical and mental health. It's time to ask for help if you need it. If you've been working on the same thing for months and months, but your thoughts around it, your behaviors around it are still unchanged, you're still in this kind of static pattern, it's time to admit that maybe you don't need to do it alone and you can get some help. You can even go on YouTube. There's so many people who offer great free videos on YouTube talking about how to get your physical health back into balance, your mental health back into balance. Start researching. Start making that commitment that is a profound act of self-love when you do that thing that it could be that one little thing, that one little tweak, that one little change that shows you, your body, that you love it and you want to take care of it, okay? And a lot of things shift when you do that in your life on many, many levels that you can't really see with the current scope of consciousness where you feel like you're struggling or suffering to get into balance. There are more opportunities available for you, for you for channeling now. If you feel called to just sit and channel energies, maybe you have felt something when you're drifting off into the dream world. Maybe you felt something when you've been kind of daydreaming during your waking day. You feel like there's something coming in. There's downloads, chunks of information trying to reach you. This is not your imagination. This is not hallucination. But what is required is that you make time for surrender and listening to more guidance that's available to you now. There's more guidance available to you now, more than you would believe, more than ever before, more than you realize. And so making time for this is so important. If you're someone that says, you know, I don't have time to meditate, I don't like meditating, I don't see the point, yet at the same time you're feeling like there's something trying to reach me. There's some information, some chunk, some bit, maybe even some minuscule bit of information you feel like it's trying to reach you. It's trying to come into your energy. Again, you're not hallucinating this. You're not imagining it. It's time for you to just surrender to this. And you don't have to spend four hours a day in meditation. It can be 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes out of your 24-hour cycle of a day is easy to commit to. It can be the first thing you do in the morning. Just lay in bed for 10 minutes before you look at your phone, before you, you know, let the dog out, before you start the coffee. Lay in bed for 10 minutes and make yourself available for energies coming through. Sometimes we don't want to do this work, even though we know there's information that's trying to reach us. Sometimes we have a fear of what's coming in, of what we'll see, if we can handle it, if we're special enough to receive it. Again, old paradigms of thinking that we have to be special, we have to be chosen. We are all chosen, darlings. We are all chosen. We are all divine transmitters and receivers of energy. But it's time that we start acting like it. And when we make ourselves available for these energies, what can come in to enhance your life, enhance your spirit, enhance your zest for living in general can be so remarkable. And that you'll say to yourself, God, you know, why didn't I start doing this sooner? Why didn't I start making 10 or 15 minutes of my day available for this sooner? I feel so wonderful. I feel regenerated. I feel healed. I feel present. I feel awake in my life. These wonderful things start to happen when we make room for them to happen, but it has to be a conscious and deliberate participatory choice for us to do so. This is also a time as we go from January and into February now, really a time to stretch ourselves, to keep embarking on something new and not in a way where I was talking about at the beginning of this call where, you know, seeking out something new in a kind of manic way, but something new that breaks yourself rather out of routine, out of habituation. When we get stuck in routine, we get stuck in habituation, we get stuck in the same old thought forms, belief patterns, attitudes, opinions. When you break out of your routine, your habituation, this can be a physical habit, this can be a thinking habit, um, this could be where you just mix up the routine of your day and do things out of order. When we get ourselves out of order, it's not chaotic. It helps you lean into the rich variety of what is beyond your routine, beyond your habituation. And also this break from habituation allows you to hold higher frequencies more easily. Learn something new that stretches you, stretches your current beliefs, 
this could be this this is a fun thing that I've decided to do for myself. I'm going to spend each month out of 2020 learning about a different country. <laughs> I've decided that I'm going to get out my old atlases. I actually was a physical geography major when I was in college. And I have a lot of maps. I love maps. I love atlases. I love looking at grids. I love learning about countries and cities and towns. And so every month I'm going to learn about a new country. This just is going to be fun. It's going to stretch my mind. It's going to open up, you know, what I think is possible or what I think I know already. I'm adding to my base of knowledge in a way that it's going to be fun for me and I'm going to learn something new and maybe be a little bit more fun at parties. Who knows? But it's important to have the sense of playfulness now, especially around stretching yourself, stretching your imagination, stretching your level of creativity, stretching your belief systems a little bit. Maybe you can give up on some of those old rigid belief systems that just don't, they seem clunky. They just don't seem to work for you anymore. It's okay. You're not gonna lose who you are. Again, this is not a time to fear the end of something with these big changes, but rather a time to anticipate with wonder and excitement the start of a new cycle. And of course, when we think of the beginning of a new calendar year, that's exactly what we're looking at, isn't it? So I hope that this information has found you well and given you some inspiration. I wanna wish you all so much love and peace and happy new year. And I'll talk to you for the monthly energy forecast for February. Bye-bye.